Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard at Richard on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Joey at Joe Wonderall on the Make Code Forum. And today we are back to working on our shmup game, shmup, shmup, shmup grade, shmup grade game. Um, and so uh, what we're going to do today is originally I think we were going to work on enemies, but I think it's actually going to be more fun for us to do um, uh, ridiculous weapon stuff. You know, so we're going to start doing that. Um, all right. Oh, hello, invalid project C. Is that invalid project from the forum? Wait, wait, shout it out if you are. All right. So before we get started, though, I want to uh, shout out the fact that we have um, a game jam going on right now. Let me open that up, actually. You can get to it at aka.ms slash game jam. OK, come game on. Game ham. There you go. We have the female game changers jam. Um, so this is uh, in celebration of Women's History Month. And um, you have to make a game that is celebrating a woman who has impacted your life. That can be any. Um, uh, uh, it could be a person from history. It could be a person who's in your actual life. It could be a character you create. Um, you know, we're we're pretty wide open on this one. So go ahead and um, make a game, submit it. Um, and if you're under 16, you can also submit it to the Code Ninjas um, GM that's going on at the same time, um, which we're doing in partnership with them. Um, and they have a chance to win a MetaQuest 3. And then second place is an Xbox Series S. Um, so that's pretty cool. And you are allowed to submit to both, so please submit to ours as well. Um, as usual, we're going to play all of the winners um, on stream after the um, judging is done, and we will be putting them up on the home screen of um, Arcade to replace the current Game Jam winners. So look forward to that. All right, anyway, let's get back to our coding. Um, so we talked about a few different things that we would want to do for like um, uh, like projectiles that we um, can fire with our um, from our player. And so, so far, we've mainly talked about normal, which I've just been messing with. Let me go ahead and change this back to dot. Let me get rid of the sine wave. Um, and normal is just, you know, just normal style. You're just firing some dots in eight directions. Um, so we have some modifiers here. Um, one of them is um, shotgun. So that is uh, we fire slower, but you fire a burst in random angles, you know, every time, um, which is fun. We have shrapnel, and the idea with that is when you fire things, if they destroy an enemy, that enemy, you know, blows into little bits. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Homing, pretty self-explanatory. Um, chaos was Thomas's idea, and it is... Um, uh, every bullet it flips between one of the other ones. Um, so if we do that one, that's going to be last. So don't get your hopes up for that that one. Um, and then laser, um, you know, it just fires, but it fires in a line. And it hits everything in the line. Um, and some other stuff. Let's see. Uh, Sword learns and says, uh, did you know there is a Make Code Arcade wiki? Um, yeah, I saw some members of the forum started that. I haven't looked at it in a while, though. Joe, have mm. you? I have not either. Mm. Mm. All right. Um, so let's do the shotgun one. I think that'll be fun to do. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, this is our fire player projectile. So we basically have a few different parameters we can mess with on our player, um, uh, which is the fire timer. Yeah, yeah. So we have this um, fire rate. So we have our damage and we have fire rate. So fire rate is how fast we fire. So higher means we will fire slower. Um, basically, it's a number of milliseconds in between each bullet that is being fired. Um, and um, Thorn Lawrence says, did you add my spam level to Rhombus Rush stitched together? No, sorry, I'm disqualifying that one. Um, uh, OK. <laughs> but. Um, the uh, uh, it says too hard question mark. Yes, it has to be possible to beat. Um, all right, so um, 
let's go ahead and uh, plus this up. We're going to go ahead and do if projectile type equals normal. Well, you know what? Actually, um, Stormland says it is. I beat it. I need proof. Um, OK, so um, I guess there are a few different ways we can do this. Um, now, I think we are going to need to have a string like projectile type. You know, I was thinking of like uh, one of the fun things you can do is like um, I'm, I'm thinking of Enter the Gungeon, which this game has kind of become. Um, and uh, in Enter the Gungeon, you know, you can get some uh, different um, uh, things that are like take whatever bullet you're currently firing and turn it into a shotgun, you know? So now you fire a bunch of things instead of a one little thing, you know, you get like modifiers like that. Um, and, you know, maybe uh, later down the line, it'll be fun to do something like that, where we could just make it so you're firing the normal bullets, but in shotgun mode or something like that. But we're, we're, we'll do that later if we're going to do it. Um, for now, we're just going to kind of code them separately and then, you know, uh, do something based off that. So um, what we're going to do here is we want to um, fire a bunch of projectiles um, in like a little, um, just like a random cone kind of. I mean, we're just kind of like kind of like fire, I think, like 10 little projectiles and just give them a random um, angle and also probably a random starting point and a little bit random velocity. Um, and the idea being we want it to look like a realistic spread. Um, so uh, let's go to where we're creating our player and we're going to go ahead and set this shotgun as our projectile type right here. And um, now if I press A, nothing's going to happen because uh, we're not actually doing anything, in anything inside of this fire player projectile. Um, so let's do that. We're going to go ahead and do a loop in here. We'll just grab a normal old repeat. We're going to do repeat, I don't know, how many times? 12? I don't know. We're going to go ahead and create a projectile um, with straight path. Uh, visual, we'll do the circle visual, um, and we'll put the scale at one. Um, and then we're going to give it, uh, yeah, we'll leave that as is. So here's our center angle right here. Um, so we're going to take this 45 times firing direction minus 90, and we're going to add a random amount to it. Go into math, get a ran pick random. We're going to go from, I don't know, negative 30 to positive 30 degrees. Um, OK, so let's try this. OK, um, so yeah, that's that's creating a nice little cone type thing, but it's it's too uniform. Um, so we want to make it look a little bit more realistic and to do that. We are going to also randomize the speed. So let's grab a pick random right here. We're going to change this from uh, uh, like 80 to 120. Okay, and let's also go ahead and just mess with our fire rate right now so that we're not firing so quickly. We'll do one second. All right. OK, that's looking better. I think they need to be faster. We'll go ahead and um, change this to 100, change this to 160. Yeah, that's looking OK. <laughs> I forget how fast we move. Yeah. Player 70. OK, yeah, so we're moving slower than our bullets, which is what I wanted to make sure. Um, all right, uh, so we could spread them a little bit more, but I don't know, maybe this is fine for now. What do you think, Joey? It's probably fine for now. We can always adjust it later after. Mm -hmm. yeah. all right, other well, let's change the color. We'll make them orange. I don't know.
cool. OK, that works. Uh, well, we'll make them red, actually, because orange is kind of well, red kind of looks like blunt. We'll do pink. Um, so there we go. That's a shotgun type thing. Um, we probably want to. Uh, well, let, let's do the next one. Um, so. Uh, OK, um, I don't want to do shrapnel yet because that one's complicated. Um, we can do homing, but that's going to make me switch to JavaScript. Same with laser. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and cut laser and uh, shrapnel for now because they're um, those ones require a lot of extra code. So yeah. we'll worry about those later. Um, homing probably won't be too bad. We should just add another movement type. To our. Um, uh, a little extension we have here. So we have these movement paths that you can pass in. So we'll add another one that's homing, which will just latch on to whatever the closest in me is and just kind of try to try to go towards that. Good. Um, so we can do that one. Um, let's see. Let's also do our sine wave. So um, we'll do um, sine and then um, helix will be fun. All right, so um, let's do the helix first. That, that's the one I mainly want to do. All right, helix, and go ahead and set our player projectile type to this. And I want to set our fire rate to be real low, 20. All right, now we're going to create two projectiles. One of them is going to be blue. Going to do dot. We're going to grab our sine wave here. So let's look at how this is going so far. Whoa! Wait, did I not change the projectile type? No, I did helix. Then why am I creating a? Oh, I, I still have the random angle stuff in here, right? <laughs> Pull that out. Put that in there. Get rid of our random speed also. All right, there we go. OK, so we need to mess with the um, frequency of this because you can barely tell it's a sine wave right now. So we're going to go ahead and change this frequency to be 5. That might be too much. We'll see what it does. Ooh. OK, no, that's, that's about right. Um, Let's lower the amplitude. So we're going to lower the amplitude to be uh, five. There we go. Cool. And um, we're going to go ahead and change the. We'll leave the visual as dot, but we're going to change the scale to be like two so that it's bigger. There you go. Cool. Um, now to make those a helix, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this. We'll make this one um, purple. Um, we're going to take our phase. And this is in radians, I'm guessing. Um, mm. So I'm going to put in, I want 90 degrees. So, oh, wrong one. So I'm going to go ahead and grab pi and then divide it by 2, which is 90 degrees. Like that. And OK, no, that, that wasn't quite the right. So I, I want it to be pi is what I want. There we go. Check that out. That's pretty cool. Yes. OK, let's lower the frequency a little bit. So we're going to change this to be 4. Oh, whoops, I changed one of them and not the other. Four. There we go. All right, cool. And maybe we up the an the amplitude of pixel. <clears throat> now, the other option we could do here is, yeah, OK, let's up the amplitude. So we'll up this, you know, we'll do seven.
Cool. All right. Uh, so Soren Larson says it looks like DNA. Yeah, that's that's what I meant by helix. Yeah. Um. Okay, wait. Actually, I'm gonna we'll leave the amplitude like that. I'm gonna put the frequency back up, and I'm gonna up the speed. One seventy. You should add some crossbars. Yeah, maybe. It's kind of cool as it is. Maybe if you could make it so it's like a double helix, but it's uh, spreading out as time goes on, that could be fun to add crossbars or something like that. Mm. Wait, what? So like oh, it, uh, a double helix, but as it goes uh, further out, it gets wider. Oh, so like interesting. a cone helix. Yeah. OK, I think we need to. Um... We're going to take our speed and we're going to add the player speed to it. So let's go ahead and grab player speed. Uh, because the thing that's annoying me is that it's bunching up when we walk, you know? Yeah. And the way to that's fix that. Annoying when it, we do that. Yeah. The way to fix that is just add player speed. So. See, and this is what sprint. Grab that. Stick that in here. And let's see if we have that issue anymore. Whoa, OK. Um, well, that did something weird. Oh, so uh, player mm -hmm. speed plus zero. That won't work. Gotcha. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Cool. Um, so one thing we could consider here also is doing it at a slower rate. So um, change the slower rate to be like 100 and then make the projectiles bigger. So we'll go to we'll switch to circle. Which is bigger. Whoa, OK, no, that's not good. Let's try ring and uh, change the scale to one. Whoops, what am I doing? There you go, ring one. Eh, eh, yeah, I don't know, I'm not doing it. OK. So switch this back to dot, change this back to two. Dot, two, there we go, cool. All right, that's our helix. All right, let's do homing. Oh, to do homing, we need enemies. OK, all right, let's add enemies. Um, so how to add enemies? Well, um, we want to do two types of enemies, basically, um, or two ways enemies spawn. So one of them is just going to be we are going to put tiles in our tile map. And um, when that tile map comes into frame, um, then it will spawn whatever enemy it's supposed to spawn. You know, so uh, let's go ahead and make one of those right now. We're going to go to my tiles. We're going to go ahead and create a new tile. And we want this to create an enemy. So I'm just going to go ahead and put E. And um, I want this to spawn an enemy that's going to the right. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a right arrow. Um, and then uh, I don't know what other information we want to put in here. Um, and I want this to spawn when the player like. Um, when the player arrives, so mm -hmm. like when the player walks past this, it's going to be like a trip wire. And spawn this enemy. Um, so I'm just going to use this little line to indicate that. Um, and then uh, I'm going to put in the enemy type, which is just going to be. Um,
a G for grunt. You know, I'll make it a GR. There you go. OK, let's go ahead and put a bunch of these guys in. All right, so when we pass in front of these guys, we want enemies to spawn from the right and fly into screen. All right, so let's do some code for that. We're going to go to um, our camera movement code. Well, no, I guess we don't want to do that. I guess we just want to scan around the player. So let's make a function. Scan for. This is going to take in um, a sprite. This is going to take in a direction. This is going to take in a tile. And let's see, do I already have a temp location? Nope, let's create one of those. So we're going to do temp location. We are going to set our temp location to be the current location of our sprite. No, this isn't seen. Cool. And um, what we're going to do basically is we want to scan in whatever direction we pass in. And this is going to be our normal compass direction. So zero will be up, one will be right, two will be down, three will be left. Um, and we want this to be um, basically we're going to go tile by tile and try and look for whatever this tile is. And then when we find that tile, we will um, return that location. Um, so I'm going to do while. And I guess the check I want to do is, well, this is kind of annoying. Um, because we want to, we need to bound it, right? So we don't go infinitely. Um, or you know what? We'll just do while the location is not a wall. So if you hit a wall, we're we're not gonna like you know treat that as something that can spawn anything. Um, so or yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and um, go into scene and grab the is wall block, which is right here. Go into scene and grab the is whatever tile block. Put that right here. And we're going to grab our temp location. And do that. Then at the end here, we're going to say if the temp location is this, whatever our tile is, then we want to return it. Else we want to return undefined. I'm just going to try and use that from Sprite Utils. We'll see what happens. No, OK, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, our blocks, blocks cannot handle that. Um, oh, because it tries to merge the type undefined or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, wait. There we go. Do this, do that, do that. There we go. OK. Cool, all right. Now we're going to get this little warning saying we never assign this variable. Well, that's kind of the whole point. So we want to return a variable we've never assigned, and that's going to return undefined. Undefined basically just means um, like uh, returning Not a set, thing. Doesn't yeah, exist, yeah. right? 
exactly. It's like a value that doesn't exist. So, you know, it's a good way to mark that you didn't find what you're looking for. OK, let's see. Um, Soren Lawrenson says, oh, my God. All right, here we go. Um, make sure to set this game in Radish season. Also, and also troubleshooting the setup for the Maycode office. Um, I cast Thunderspell. Say red leather, yellow leather. Uh, 400 euros, dollars. I just realized Richard owes $26 and zero cents. Do a Python stream on Friday. Stay static TypeScript five times. Static TypeScript, static TypeScript, static TypeScript. Static TypeScript. Oh my God, that's hard. Um, I want to see Richard do it. I know Thomas can. I meant Joey, not Richard. Zero out of zero. Okay. Say static TypeScript five times, Joey. Static TypeScript, static TypeScript, static TypeScript, static TypeScript, static TypeScript. OK, you did a better job than me for sure. Um, static type script, 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 static type script. All right, there we go. OK. Um, so uh, here we want to switch on our direction. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a bunch of checks here. And depending on what this is, we're going to go ahead and set our location to be the location in the direction. So 0, 1, or no, not 2, not 2, 1, 2. OK, um, go into scene, grab the always useful um, tile map location left of location. And so if it is uh, 0, then we want to go up. So we're going to do tile map location top of, and then change this to be temp location. Go copy and paste this a few times. No, whoops, didn't mean to copy the whole thing. All right, um, one is to the right, two is bottom, three is left. All right, cool. Okay, we did our little scan for function. Um, so, um, let's go ahead inside of an on game update. Or, you know, we'll make a function for this. Do tile triggers. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grab a function. We're going to do scan for right here. We're going to set temp location. to scan for, we're going to pass in our sprite. Uh, we're going to pass in the direction. So we want to go left, which is three. And then we're going to pass in the tile we want to check, which is in scene. And then we have to annoyingly grab this and then drag that out and throw this away. And um, we're looking for this. Um, and then we want to say, if temp location we're going to go ahead and clear that on our temp location. So um, we're going to set our temp location to be dirt so that it doesn't fire again. And um, with that, we should be able to see this working. So we're going to go ahead and go into our on game update and call our do tile triggers function. All right, so we're going to walk up and there we go. We see our tile triggers disappearing. That means our code's working. All right, cool. And um, with this, we're going to go ahead now and um, actually spawn uh, the enemy. So um, let's go into our little thing over here. Um, and we're going to grab this move my sprite. So we're going to create an enemy. Um, so let's do set. And let's see, uh, temp. We go. We'll do temp enemy. Um, so let's go ahead and create a what is what is what is an enemy of a cactus? It's a philosophical question for you. Um, woodpecker. They'd probably be kind of rude to each other. True, true, true. I guess what dangers are you likely to encounter in a desert is perhaps a better, more general question. Uh. 
Probably not alligators, so I'm out of ideas. Okay, I forgot. You can only you can only think of alligators when you're in pre under pressure. Um. All right. Well, I'm trying to think of what they have in Mario games. Pokies. Um. So Lawrence instance says, how do you make a detachable enum in JS for blocks? I swear I demoed to that to you, to you a couple weeks ago. I think it was just a couple. Yeah. yeah. Make another block and you set it as the shadow. Yep. OK, um, let's just do um, a bird of some kind. So we're going to just do a real basic V shape. Uh, so what you're going to do, Soren Lawrenson, is you're going to create a function that is going to be the block that you're getting. Um, so it's going to be your enum. It's going to take in one argument, which is going to be the enum. Um, and then uh, for the other one, you just make it, instead of taking in the enum as an argument, it takes a number. And then um, you want to uh, make it so that and let me make this 10 wide um uh you set that as the shadow so you're going to do the param name dot shadow equals and then um the block id of whatever block you just created and that should do it for you You made a mistake by making the block ID the first 100 digits of pi. Yeah, that that's a mistake. You should have made it the first 100 digits of pi, but reversed. That would have been better. What? What is it? It's kind of looks like a bird, kind of. OK. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and make this of kind enemy. We're going to go ahead and place this guy. Um, we want to do off screen on our um, uh, tile. So we're going to place it on the tile. Mm -hmm. Nine animals that eat cactus. Desert tortoise. Oh, that's a fun, black that's tail a fun jackrabbit. Camels, Ooh, that's a fun one too. Prairie dogs. Eastern cottontail. Collared peccary, which is like a little pig looking dude. Wait, OK, keep this list around. These are all good ideas. Galapagos land iguana. Gila woodpecker, woodpecker. I was right. No, I, I yeah, no, I 100% I believed you. Uh, desert wood rat. OK. OK, yeah, we're going to refer to that list when we're doing enemies now. Those are, those are all good ones. OK, um, so we're going to place on top of the templation. We want to move them off screen. Um, so we're going to set their uh, right. To be. The left of our camera. So by setting them on top of the tile, that's going to set their Y to be the correct value. And now this is going to set their left to be. Um, here we go. Let's put in a math here. We're going to put in their. Um, OK, we want to move temp enemy. We want to move them to temp enemy X plus just like the screen width, so 160. Um, probably even more than that. We'll do 180. We're going to move them over um, one sec. Oh, well, well, why we just want to be the their current Y. Over one second. Final speed, well, I don't know, whatever. Um, and uh, finally, we want to 
um, turn on some flags. So we're going to turn on. Uh, it's not working. Uh, it's going to be way easier to post that on the form or to look back on the on the uh, example from a couple weeks ago that we did. Yeah, uh, um, we. I, yeah. I don't want to hijack stream and do it again. So um, Joey's right. Posting it on the forum is the best way to do it. Um, we'll be able to give you a thing and then other people will be able to see the. Thing, yeah, don't don't <laughs> don't post it in the in the Twitch chat. That's not going to work. All right. Uh, up this to like five seconds. There we go. All right. There's some enemies. OK. Oh, goes through walls on. That's what I wanted there. All right, cool. That's an enemy. Not a very interesting one, but that's fine. All right, let's do a more interesting enemy. Or I guess we should finish what we started. Let's let's go ahead and finish this guy. So um, we're going to go to our um, on tile map loaded. We want to hide that tile. So we're going to go ahead and do um, inside of scene. We're going to do cover all or non scene it's in tile util. Cover all blank tiles with blank. We're going to cover all of our enemy tiles with the dirt so you don't get to see it. Um, and we are going to do, um, let's see. Let's see. What am I thinking of? Wow, you ever have a thought and then you just immediately lose it? Never in my life. Every oh, thought okay. I ever had is. I also, I, I smell burnt toast. Um, is it? Yeah. Um, that's that's uh, not a not a great <laughs> one to have. Um, I'm good. Um, okay. So oh, I wanted to set a lifespan on these guys. That's what I wanted to do. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and take our ten minute ten enemy. We're gonna give them a lifespan of five seconds. And now um, we want to give them um, some health, probably. So we'll go into here and um, or just regular sprites. I guess we already have. Yep, sprite data here. So we're going to set a number on them. So we're going to do temp enemy. We're going to set their data uh, health. Two, ten. I don't know. We're going to tweak all these values later. All right. Now with that, let's go ahead and go to our overlaps code. On projectile overlaps with sprite of kind enemy. Great. That's what we want. So we're already destroying the projectile. That's good. We're changing our score by one. Well, we'll take that out. Um, so let's go ahead and change their health by whatever our current damage is. So we're going to do 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 do. Mine's sprite. Yeah, I'm in sprite data. The sprite you tell us, I mean. Change data by number. Stick our sprite in there. Stick, change this to health. We're going to do by zero minus, and we store the damage on our player sprite. If I recall correctly. Um, so this is going to be our real sprite. Where art thou? Real sprite. There we go. Going to go ahead and grab damage. And now we're going to see is our damage less than or equal to zero? And if it is, then we are going to destroy our enemy. And sure, we'll change our score by one. Um, so let's go to logic. Do a less than right there. Grab 
this, stick that right there, change this to Sprite, change this to Health, make this less than or equal to, and then put in a Destroy, and stick our Sprite there. Okay, let's give this a shot. So I'm going to go over here so I have plenty of room to shoot them. There we go. Okay. I destroyed one. There we go. Destroyed another. Cool. All right. That works. Our game's pretty boring right now, but at least it works. All right. So with that, um, let's start doing um, another enemy type. Okay, so let's think of what. Give, give me one of the animals on that list. One that moves around a lot. Uh, let me open that list up again on my computer this time, so I'm not scrolling on my phone. Um, it moves around a lot, or moves around uh, quickly. I mean, because I would say well, that the well, desert tortoise probably would spend the most time out of any of these moving around because I of its don't think that's rate true. of movement. Right, it's, it would like the other ones will get move around just You're for like a second. You're assuming a tortoise to has somewhere to be, Joey, which I don't okay. think is necessarily uh, the case. Black-tailed jackrabbit. All right, that works. Yeah. Um, let me look up a picture of this dude. Um, I put the the link in the chat. I guess that's. I mean, I could narrate the link. It's pretty quick. Oh, look at that guy. So he's just a bunny, but with extra big round ears, and he's kind of skinny. I like it. Yeah. All right. And he does indeed have a black tail. Um, OK, so let's draw one of these dudes as best we can. go we're gonna get the face in there i'd like to animate this guy too if possible but we'll we'll see um we're gonna need this to be much bigger let's do 16 by 16 for now okay That looks, it's a beautiful reindeer. Yeah, it is, right? I'm just blocking stuff out right now. I'm not doing yeah, television no, yet. I got you, I got you, I got you. Um, so I guess the important question is, all of the animals on this list are kind of going to end up friend-shaped, unfortunately. That's true. Uh, so do we just make them feral? <laughs> um, like, how do we make it so it doesn't feel bad? Maybe you're just sending love to them, or like sending hearts instead of like that's what the dots are. No, you're 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 fighting them. Okay, you are fighting them. Sometimes you gotta fight them, even you know. I mean, it's it's a doggy dog world out there, you know. Doggy dog world. That's what I hear. Uh, even if I was, uh, you know, in the ocean, I like sharks. Sharks are cool, but sometimes you got to punch them in the nose, you know. That's true. But if you want, we won't. We won't make them die. We can make them sprint off screen or something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll do the faint approach from uh, Pokemon. You're definitely nothing. Nothing bad's happening when you faint a Pokemon in the wild and just leave it there sleeping. Yes, no, nothing bad has ever happened to a Pokemon that's been defeated. They've never been magic harped. What? Is that what? Uh, I guess slowpoke tail. They don't, there's also references to like eating magic Are are there in the Pokemon games? I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe that's anime. Let me think. 
There definitely are for Slowpoke. I will grant you that, one hundred percent. Was the um, was the five hundred uh, Poke Dollar Magic Carp not in, like a joke on eating it? Let's see. The the what? You know the the Poke like in uh, red and, and blue and fire red leaf green. You buy a Magic Carp for five hundred Poke Dollars. Oh, I don't remember that. I vaguely do. I mean, yeah, I did think I do think that was a reference to the anime. Are you sure that was? Oh wait, in... no, Magic Carp are explicitly bad for eating, aren't they? They're like skin and bones. I remember that. Never mind. That was a that was a whole joke. Yeah, the Misty reminds them in the episode. Uh, Brock and Ash dream of a Magic Carp sashimi, but. Reminds him that the Pokédex entry is Magikarp is just scale and bones. Mm, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, I guess I'll switch this back to an outline. Undo, 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 undo. There we go. But I don't want it to be black because that takes away from the tail. There. I don't know. I don't know. What are you think, Joey? Yeah. That's a rabbit. All right, let's animate this dude. All right. I'm going to go into animation. Paste this dude in here. So this will be a trick. OK, so he's going to leap upwards. So we're going to take his front half and move it up basically don't leave the ear behind well we are kind of going to leave the ear behind so we want to do i mean the whole point of the leap is to show off the little flop of the ears right yeah the, the ears are going to flop don't worry don't you worry about that thank you this is not a no ears left behind situation mm -hmm. He's a little bunny jump. This might be something I have to do off stream because this is what this is one of those finicky animations. I think I can do it, but it is going to be um, it's gonna be an investment. Yeah, it's gonna I'm gonna have to work on it for a little bit. Um, 
Well, anyway, we're about out of time today anyway. So let's just call it here for today. Um, reminder, Game Jam's going on. Um, please check that out. I still need to put together the mini Game Jam game and put it up on the home screen and everything. I'll try and do that by the end of this week. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, uh, oh, we have a thing from Soren Lawrenson. Do you wanna, did you give me that? Can you access links again? God. Okay. Grab this. Put it over here. All right. Teams. All right. So we're taking a look at this economics extension once again. Um, cool. Let's go ahead and look at the JavaScript for this. See, so you want to have this uh, sign, I'm guessing, be a detachable enum. Uh, so what you're going to want to do here is you're going to change this economics.number symbols to be a number instead of this type. And then you're going to create a function that just in, takes in, oh yeah, like you're doing right here. So it just takes in this stocks and then just returns it. And then you have this block ID. And then whenever you're using these stocks, mm -hmm. Who from? Yeah, there you go. Who from dot shadow equals youth block. Yeah, this should work just fine. Is that not working? No, it is working. Yeah, perfect. Nice. There you go. Yeah, you got it right. And I can also put math in there. Cool. All right. Well, that's it for today, folks. Thank you for um, tuning in. I am Richard. I Richard on the Makeup Forum. I'm Joe at JWonder on the Make Code Forms. And we will see you on Friday.